Hello and welcome to Ask Me About K-Pop, the essential guide for recent converts and seasoned fans alike. My name is Shannon. And I'm Angelica. And welcome to a super special episode. <laughs> if you are listening to this episode on the day that it comes out, today is the 30th birthday of the only man in the world. It's Chimino's birthday. Yay! And he's our favorite person. So we wanted to dedicate a whole episode to all things Mino. Yes. So today is a birthday celebration for our bestest birthday boy. And if you've listened to our bias episodes, you will have already heard us squeal about this beautiful man for many, many minutes. So we're going to try to talk about new things today. I'll try. Not I like just all the reasons that we love him, but also like accomplishments and such. But I do know that we will probably be repeating ourselves in this episode, and I'm going to try not to be self-conscious about that, <laughs> because we may have said these things before, but they remain important. And um, they are still reasons why we love him. Exactly. That has not changed. Exactly. So we have previously done actual deep dives for Mino's shiny members, Jonghyun and Taemin, but Mino does not have the same... Uh, Solo, Solo music career. So we're not doing a traditional deep dive today, but we're mm. just going to talk about him and all the things that he's done and all the reasons he's special and why you should also love him as much as we do. Because despite being an extremely famous person in Korea, like he's so famous for being really good looking, he's not the most popular shiny member. Mm -hmm. Like in fandom terms, he's just not. Yeah. And it's really hard to like find Mino content. So we're going to create some today <laughs> for you. We're going to be the change we see in the world and uh, make our own content. Exactly. Exactly. So who is Che Mino? He is a singer, an actor, a model, a beautiful person, an earth angel. And everything to us. But he was born on December 9th, 1991. So it is his 30th birthday today, and he was born in Incheon, South Korea. Um, he has 41 songwriting credits for Shiny Songs and one release as a solo artist. <laughs> just one, and it's for very now. precious to us. <laughs> but it's just one for now. But he also has been in five featured films, 14 dramas or web series, 10 reality slash variety shows as a host or a permanent cast member, and then countless, countless guest appearances on every show you've ever watched. So he's always around. And right now, this moment, he is currently hosting a Neighbor Now show called Best Choice. Based on his name, it's a sports show, but it's still really nice to see him and his beautiful face and cute outfits in HD every week. Yes, and he has like fun guests. Come on, Jinky came on his radio show a few days ago, and it's just a good time, even he though all he talks about is sports. But that's what he loves. <laughs> um, and he also is a trainer on the uh, idol competition show Wild Idol that is airing right now. And he is on a show called King of Golf, season two. And he's been looking so cute in oh, his golf Oh, he looks pants. so great golfing. <laughs> does he look great golfing? He looks super great golfing. He does. Um, so let's see. How do, we, how do we even get into this? So we've told Mino's like story before, but he was one of the street casted mm -hmm. idols accosted by a weird SM stalker in the mall. Yes, we've told so many <laughs> stories of just like a good looking kid getting chased down by some adult <laughs> with him like being like, take this business card, tell your parents. <laughs> Uh, but that was that was his story. That as was well. his story. His dad is a professional soccer coach, um, and he never wanted his children to play soccer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hard life didn't want that for them. But I don't think they expected idle life either. Definitely not. <laughs> but he did his. He uh, got good grades as a promise to his dad so that he could join SM Entertainment, which he did. And then in 2008 or 2007, he lived in China, 
as part of a like SM Idol exchange program. And he roomated with Suho from uh, EXO and they mm. lived in China together for like a year. So he speaks Chinese very well. He also speaks English very well. And I feel like he hides both of these skills. But when you watch him on like travel shows, it just comes out. Yeah. Like I remember being shocked the first time I watched um, Beautiful Beautiful Day. What is the show where they go on the tr- Chinese be- One Fine Day? Oh, One Fine Day. One Fine Day. Mino went on vacation to London and he struck up a conversation with old people on the train. Like mm-hmm. he started talking to them in English. And yeah. I was like, he's that confident that he's starting conversations? I, I would never. Um, but that's an impressive and cool thing about it. It is impressive. I don't think I knew that he spoke Chinese. Yeah, he does. I've never seen him speak it. He did it on re- uh, a Return of Superman episode that I'll mention later that took place in China. He was like the oh, resident right. like, I speaker do remember for the when group. he went to China with, re- with Return of Superman. Yeah. Um, so those are cool things about him. And then obviously in 2008, he debuted with Shiny as the second youngest member <laughs> and rapper. Mm-hmm. And listen to our Shiny Deep Dives for more information about his career with them. With them. Um, But to get us into our first little topic of discussion, in 2010, Mino made his acting debut, and he debuted in a TV movie called The Pianist, which is about a 21-year-old piano repairman. Mino was only 19, but 21 in this show. And then he falls in love with a 30-year-old piano teacher. Mm. Like, really, at the beginning of Shiny, they were really leaning into this. Like they are new thing. The whole Mm -hmm. new nothing. Yeah, they love older women. So this movie is still available officially on YouTube with subs on the KBS YouTube channel. So if you ever want to watch The Pianist, it's there. Um, But that started his acting career. So I just want to talk about some great things that he's been in. Um, So in 2012, he starred like he was the main character of this wacky drama called Salamander Guru and the Shadow Operation Team which was a drama about people who ran like a tarot, like a fortune telling scam. And the guru has dementia, so he can't do fortune telling anymore. So they hire Mino to be like a hacker and talk to them in their earpieces so Mm. that they can scam people. (laughs) And like every single idol like guessed it on the show. IU was on it. Now Taemin Ki like uh sunny from girls generation like so many people just like showed up on this drama and it looked really goofy and fun but you can't find it anywhere oh, but there are random clips all over youtube and that's when he had his like big biggest fluffy, mullet his like fluffy dong hair yes yeah, so fluffy um and then the next drama he did is a very important one to us this mm. is to the beautiful you Uh, This was an SM production. We've talked about it a lot of times. Starring Mino and Sully from FX. And he plays a... What does he do? Jump? High jump? He's a pole vaulter. Pole vaulting. That's Mm -hmm. what it is. Yes. And he goes to like sports school for special sports kids. (laughs) Yes. He goes to like a special sports academy. And Sully plays like his biggest fan or something. And she goes... I don't remember like what exactly made her the motivation was but she pulls like an amanda Bynes, she's the man and enrolls in this all boys school as a boy yeah to protect him in some way like i remember that she did it for him like he was the whole reason that she went to this school and she ends up being his roommate and like tries to create a friendship but like she's kind of weird and, and he's very like, cold and very like mm-hmm. broken because he has like a dead mom and a mean dad and so he's like yeah really he, and he's just sad. like very like focused on his <laughs> sport and whatever um but yeah it's hijinks and sue obviously hijinks and sue but it is great and like he was so tan on it and yes like, doing sports little tank chops little shorts and stuff it was just like visually an excellent time yeah it was one of the first dramas that i ever watched if not the first drama that i finished i don't remember if i watched that one or my love from another star first but 
I watched it while I was in grad school when I like first started listening to K-pop. And my friend Kara, who went with us to the Super M <laughs> concert, watched it with me because I was watching it on the TV once and there was a scene where Mino was like in his little athletic shorts and he was like doing squats or something. <laughs> and she like walked by and was like, who is this butt? And sat down and like, started, and I was like, let's start this from the beginning. Yeah. And we started it from the beginning. <laughs> We had a great time. It is still available on Vicky if you've never watched this drama. I think you should give it a watch. It's a really fun time. It's not a like high quality drama, <laughs> but it's fun. But it is fun. Um, the next year in 2013, he was the like C cast of a drama called Medical Top Team, which is also still available on Vicky. But he was like, you know, third banana, like the intern. It's a hospital drama about mm-hmm. hospitals. So he was in the gr- crew of like, you know, what are they? Inter- like the interns. Yeah, or like whatever. residents or yeah. whatever. Mm-hmm. So he had like one episode that was about like him trying to save his high school crush, like from a car accident or something. But he wasn't really a main character, but I watched the whole damn thing because he was in it. <laughs> Um, next drama, you can't find it. I tried so hard to see if anybody has it because it was on (sighs) Netflix really recently and it's not anymore, but this drama was called my first time or because it's my first time, but usually just my first time. Um, and they remade this drama. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like the person who made it didn't think that they did a good job the first time. So they recasted and remade it as a two season show that is on Netflix. But Nino's not in that one. He is in this one, though. Um, And that was a really fun drama because it was like the others. He was playing teens or like, I don't know, like more wholesome. Mm -hmm. And because it's my first time was about like people who are 20 yeah, and it, and was, it was like a, a little group saucier. of friends. It was a little bit saucier, and it was um, like a flirtier and more fun, and it was more adult because yeah. it's like about young adults who basically like they're not children anymore, like they're not teenagers, and now they're kind of trying to figure out like what are they going to do with their adult life. Mm-hmm. So there's definitely dramatic moments, but and like a big part of Mino's character is like figuring out what he wants to do with his life. Um, but it was a really fun show. Yeah, I'm sad it's not available because it was really good. Um, but let's see. Then it's time for him to be in movie movies. So in 2016, um, I didn't see Canola, so I don't know what it's about. I don't even know if he, but it has like Yumi from Yumi Cells and like a grandma. Um, but I've never seen it, so I can't comment on it. Fair enough. But another movie he made in 2016, its English title is Derailed, but its Korean title is Two Men. And this was Mino and that guy from Ma Dong Sok, who's like a Marvel hero now. Mm-hmm. And he. Mino is like a shitty street kid and they like run scams and then they like try to scam this mobster who's like, no, you fucked with the wrong person. Yeah. And he like (laughs) the mobster like steals Mino's girlfriend and or like puts her in like a forces her to like work in his sketchy karaoke place. And then. Mino tries to like free his girlfriend and he like kidnaps the the mobster's daughter like in order to to yeah. blackmail him it like gets really dark this was one of the first like Korean movies that we like watched together mm-hmm. and we were like, wow, this is way more of a bummer than we thought it was going to be. And Mino gets the shit kicked out of him like more than times. once. <laughs> yeah, like a lot of times he just gets absolutely beaten to crap um, in this movie. So it was not, not fun. It's not a fun watch, <laughs> but it is available on Amazon for a dollar to rent if you've never seen it in like really gritty crime dramas that have really sad endings and are just violent there that's you what go. it is that's what this is um but then let's see the 2016 then in 2017 he was in huarang <sighs> huarang so to explain huarang which i know we have complained about before but again we're repeating ourselves today huarang was a drama that was in 2017 that was going to be like, the biggest thing. They made yeah. such a big deal about this drama because it had, like, Nino and it had V from BTS and it had, like, all the other hot actor players. Yeah, a ton of hot idols and actors. And it was going to be this, like, zany period piece about... 
about the king's these, flower boys. Yeah, because Huarang means like flower prince, flower soldier, or something. So it was like an elite team of soldiers that were all beautiful men. Yeah. And that was like the premise of it. And like one of the guys, and all of them are like elite nobility. And like that's kind of how they get like recruited into this um, team. But then one of the guys, the like main guy is actually like a beggar or something like he's very poor. And he, I think had to, like, I don't even remember because he we didn't finish places it, but I with feel the like prince he, or so. I don't even remember. He did some, yeah. He liked, I don't know. There's some kind of like identity mishap or whatever, where he maybe gets also recruited into the team, but we had to stop watching it because the main love line was incestuous and gross and weird. Yeah. Um, so it was ultimately disappointing. Yeah, but it was going to be so great. They gave us so many teaser images of these boys in their mm-hmm. waist length wigs with no yeah. shirts on. And being Mino like, looked Geez. amazing. And they looked so great. And it was going to be so good. But it wasn't good. It wasn't. But it was a great opportunity. And there was really good variety shows. And like there's funny, like Quarrel Funny cast things came things. out of it. Yeah, like what was that? Is it Two Nights, One Day? Yes, that's where a they played the jump rope one. Yeah. There's a really great, so like in honor of this hot <laughs> cast of hot boys, um, they all of the hot boys that are the Huarangs go on two days, one night, and they uh, play this like, basically play strip jump rope. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. Yeah, and it's great. It's, it's great. so great. It goes on forever. It goes on for so can't do it. long. And they're just like all shirtless and cold and jumping. And yeah. it's fun. It's a great episode. <laughs> two parts. Check that one out. Um, let's see what else. Uh, oh, he did a web drama in 2017 called 18 again, which we like watched in one sitting. (gasps) That was great. It was a drama about a guy who gets a magic diary and finds out the girl that he loves is going to kill herself and he has to try to stop her. Well, it was. Or he couldn't stop her. I know it was like, he, I don't remember the details, but I remember at first she all, she did die, right? Like right. she was already dead because he meets her father. And oh my like God, gets right. Her, and he got her, gets he gave the her the diary from her father. And then he goes back in time. To yeah, try he to somehow goes it. back in time to try and save her because, yeah, this is like the girl he loved as a teen who committed suicide. And he gets an opportunity to go back in time and he tries to change the course. Yeah. Um, But it was really good. I remember really liking it. Yeah, it was good and short and good. Um, Okay, what else? These are lots of cameos and things. Ooh, in 2018, here's a fancy movie. He was in a movie called Ilang the Wolf Brigade. That's available on Netflix. It's really like, we tried to watch it once and it just like wasn't for us because it's about like future cops. Mm -hmm. And it was just like very dark and a lot of like military, like sneaking around with guns and like everybody was wearing like helmets, like stormtroopers the whole Mm -hmm. time. And it was hard to follow. Yeah. (laughs) That one wasn't for us. But it was cool. And, but he shaved his head for it and uh, wore a wig the rest of that year. Um, also in 2019, he did another big movie that I feel like I need to watch because my husband has seen the first, it was a sequel. Mm. It's called Battle of Jangsari and it's the sequel to a movie called Operation Chromite, which has Liam Neeson in it and they're World War II movies or something. So this was like the second part, but Megan Fox was in this movie too. Yes. And it is available on Vicky if you want to watch a war movie. Awesome. Um, and then when he got back from the military, he had a small role in a show that you can still watch on Netflix called Love Struck in the City. That was a really fun, really sweet rom-com with like 30 minute episodes. So it was really quick and easy to watch. And I loved the main plot line, but Mino was like a cop Mm -hmm. who just was there to like watch the main characters like run past him and be like, oh, these weirdos. Like he was that kind (laughs) of chorus character but then the last episode of love struck in the city did like a quick like five minute epilogue of your main story and then it just followed mino home and the whole last episode was like setting up a totally different like sweet love plot line like me about mino and so i really i want them to make that into a whole show i don't know if they would but it was a fun like way to end a drama with like an extra yeah like a tease of another another character it was really fun 
Um, and he's also on Yumi Cells, which just finished airing the first season. Um, he's wonderful in that. He's not in it enough. <laughs> but he is a good side character. <laughs> but he is a good and side character. And he acts as like the impetus to get the main couple together. Yeah. So he's important. Mm-hmm. So he should show up in the second season. I hope he continues to be important. I hope. <laughs> um, but he has shows coming out really soon that I'm looking forward to. Goosebumps is going to be on Kakao TV. And it's supposed to come out this year, but it's December 9th and we have no hmm. air date. So I'm not sure about that one, but it was supposed to come out this year and it's like a horror drama. I was going to say, is this related to like the R.L. Stein book? I don't think it's related to R.L. Stein because it's Goosebumps two words. Mm. And it's just the only thing we know about it is that it's about a beautiful woman with a secret. <laughs> that is not any information. Very vague. Um, but then also they just announced a new Netflix drama. I'm so excited because Netflix yes. is easy to watch a new Netflix drama called The Fabulous and he will be a lead the main character again it's been too long it has been too long and this is his first lead in a Netflix drama so this is very exciting it's super exciting and yeah it's gonna be about like sexy fashion people so I feel like it will be very fun um but yeah that's that's Mino as an actor in a nutshell. Mm-hmm. I skipped a few cameos and movies I haven't seen, but like those are some things I can yes. vouch for. I feel like the only cameo I want to mention is his cameo in Drinking Solo Perfect. Yes. because Drinking Solo was a fun drama that starred Kibam, Ki from Shiny, and um, Mino plays key's high school bully in a flashback and it's very very funny like obviously because we know that they have like a loving bickering relationship in real life and so then to see them like it's he's only in like one episode i think where they do a flashback um but it's just so funny like it's very funny fantastic and key is a really good actor so like that show in general is a is a good watch um but his cameo in it is great yeah, it was really funny because, and he was also like extra. I mean, he usually is, but he was extra beefy during that time, and he's wearing like a school uniform, but and he's, he's like, like a busting, man busting out, of it. out of it, and that's always fun to see. <laughs> always fun to see. Um, but yeah, that's Mino as an actor. Um, but there's another thing that he's very well known for, and that is for being an excellent athlete. Mm-hmm. Like we said, he was raised in a in a athletic house like with his soccer coach dad so like he loves sports in general but he's also like known in conjunction with you know as being like an incredibly competitive and passionate person like he's not named flaming Mm -hmm. charisma for For nothing. nothing um so like he's very competitive and he has and he usually wins like he just is very good at at sports and athletics in general and so like he also has like the drive to like do whatever it takes to win. <laughs> um, so I loved like I feel like that was a big part of his reputation when he first debuted and like in second gen when like the ISACs were a really big deal still and like people really paid attention to them. It was like, can't wait for the ISACs to watch all the idols lose against Chemi No. Yeah. <laughs> like because that's just what would happen? Yeah, I was surprised to find he didn't do them very long, and it's probably because he slayed so hard. Yeah, um, they but, were like, you can't come back. Yeah. Everyone else is embarrassed. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's making things no fun. Um, But I went in to dig in to see, like, what are some things that, like, achievements and athletics that he's had. So in 2000, between 2009 and 2011, Mino was a main cast member on a show called Let's Go Dream Team Season 2. And it's specifically Season 2 because Let's Go Dream Team was on in the 90s. Mm. And this was the reboot version of it. Yeah, I remember watching this. And this was a show where it would be the dream team, your main cast of competitive celebrities, one of whom was Ricky Kim. That's where I fell in love with Ricky. Kim <laughs> um, and the dream team would then compete in like obstacle courses or track like all kinds of athletics all kinds of different stuff. against like this team of firefighters or these karate teachers like they would be the dream team versus regular people mm-hmm. or the dream team versus other celebrities depending on the episode 
what have you. Yeah. But Mino won 10 episodes of Dream Team by himself. That's fourth. Ricky was the winner at like 25. Ricky was un- unstoppable on Dream <laughs> Team. But Mino was really good. And he was like very young and like, you know, just real passionate and fiery. Yeah. So he got like a reputation yeah, on He that was like show. 18 when he was on that show. Yeah. Maybe even 17. Yeah. Um, but he won a car in the 2011, uh, Chuseok special episode. And he continued to drive that car until the end of 2018 when he finally bought a new little mini Cooper. Oh, but he drove his free car forever. Like, because he's, I don't know. He's just that kind of person. He's a financially <laughs> responsible babe. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then in 2010 at the ISACs, he won gold in hurdles and silver in the relay. Oh, wait. If anyone doesn't oh, yes, know what please. the ISACs are, it stands for Idol Sports, Sports Athletic, Athletic Competition. Championship, Championship. Championship. I don't know. Um, but it's basically like every year, it's like this big track and field meet that yeah. like all the idols do. It still happens now, but I feel like it's not as big of a deal no. as it used to be. Because nowadays it will happen and like I won't even hear about it. But it used to be like the, all the photos because this was a great time to watch like idols from different companies and different groups Mm, like interact interact because there's so much downtime in between the events and all of the idols don't participate in all of the events. So it's just this like huge arena basically where you have like whatever people running around the track and then all of these idols like sitting together in the field in the middle or Mm -hmm. like hanging out together in the bleachers. And I feel like it was just a great like people like the Mm -hmm. you went or you paid attention to the ISACs, not necessarily for the um, actual com- for the competition. competition, but for the like idol interactions. Yeah, and there's lots of rumors about lots of hookups happening at ISAC, yeah. and like, but also it got really controversial because people get hurt at it every year. Yeah, so like, I don't. There came a point pretty quickly where people were like, I don't want idols to do ISAC; mm-hmm. they'll get hurt. And I also noticed when winning looking for his uh, records today. That it seems like all the big three straight up stopped participating yeah. in Isaac about 2013. Like nobody from big companies got sent to mm-hmm. that anymore. Um, but it still continues. Like it this year continue. they did it virtual and like just did a like recap show of all the greatest moments of Isaac or whatever because they couldn't do it. Yeah. And there's always like if you watch meme videos of stuff, like there's usually clips oh, from yeah. the Isaac, like for sure. Yeah. Um, but in 2011, Mino was the MVP of Isaacs that year because he won the most gold medals, three, one for high jump, one for hurdles, and one for swimming because they had mm-hmm. swimming that year. Um, they did another Isaac in 2011 for Chusuk, and he won gold in high jump and bronze in hurdles and relay. Um, in 2012, he got gold in the hurdles, and then Track star. he did not show up at Isaac's anymore, except in 2015, he was supposed to be the coach of the futsal team, the mm-hmm. like idol futsal team, but it was a really big controversy because A, he was hurt, so like he couldn't um like participate Participate for real and shiny was supposed to have a fan meet that day he did not go to the shiny fan meet so that he could host this show and like he didn't get any screen time and like the fans were all mad that he was like Mm. that you know nbc could pull their strings and make him show up to something or whatever um and then he also was on this last year's uh golden moments yes episode reliving it as a champ Um, But he also did a show in 2013 called Star Diving Show Splash that was like a celebrity diving show, but it got canceled after four episodes because people were getting hurt. One of the idols broke his orbital bones, (gasps) like smashing on the water, broke bones in his face. So they were like, shit, we can't do this. No, no, no. They need their faces. Yeah, they really need their faces. The money. Um, Yeah, I remember Key talking about watching Mino participate in that and being like like watching it through his fingers he was like very nervous like watching him do all of his high jumps yeah for sure um but like off of oh he also did a season or like a little um there's a show called our like the korean title is our neighborhood sports and education but the english title on youtube is let as a coolest kids on the block oh yeah 
The, that was the soccer one, right? Where he played yes. soccer. Yes, it's a show where they play like all kinds of sports for like little small seasons. But he came on for the soccer one in 2014, and that was crazy because I was watching entire soccer games once a week. Yeah, and I would never do such a thing. But the things I do for him, <laughs> the things I do for him. Um, but other than like TV stuff, he plays basketball on like a rec like a neighborhood regular basketball basis. team mm-hmm. which is so cute i like love that so much but he's such a celeb and he's like no but i need to i need, I need to- my ymca yeah team. my basketball time which i think is so sweet um he also got to play in a um, a soccer game when he was in the marines like a marine yeah, soccer game that was very exciting because we hadn't seen him in a while so it was cool to see him play soccer and well, now he, he gets gone. to talk about soccer and all, all kinds of sports long. with his radio show. He's, so he's really probably living it up. I know. <laughs> really like living the dream now. I love it. Um, anything else to say about sports, Mino? I don't think so. I think we've covered it all. Um, okay. Well, then what should we move? Should we move on to a thing another thing that we love about Mino and talked about a lot of times which is how good he is with children yes because (laughs) that is also tangentially related and it like let's continue talking about variety shows yes absolutely because I was thinking like when you said anything else to think about for athletics I was just thinking about all of the great guest appearances he's made on Running Man yes Um, like even when he's not like one of the official competitors. I always think of that scene or that episode with girls generation in the mall yeah, where I he's wearing the red list. scene yes. or he's wearing the red suit um, <laughs> and chases them around. Um, that's really fun because he is so competitive and like so athletic that like he just like dominates in these, in these competitions and uh, a game like running man. He has a yeah. great time. Always. Always. Mm-hmm. But another variety show that he also makes many return appearances on is Return of Superman, which we've talked about before on this show. And it's basically just like about kids. It's like families and their kids. Uh, mostly focuses on the dad and yes. their kids. Um, and like sometimes the the parents are usually well-known figures in some way, whether they're professional musicians or athletes or whatever. Whatever, yeah. Yeah. Um, And a lot of times they will have famous people or like friends of the the fathers come and take care of the kids a ton of idols have gone on run on return of superman and mino is one that's gone multiple times multiple times so mm-hmm. i have a list of his appearances if you want to check any of them out return of superman is a show that kbs dutifully keeps on their own youtube ch- page so you can watch all of these things um, his first appearances were in 2017 around episode 180. He took, there's a soccer player who has two sets of twins and a sweet little boy. And Mino came and took the three youngest to SM mm-hmm. and like bought them cupcakes and put them in little hip hop, K-pop, little pierced hat outfit. Yes. That is one <laughs> of my favorite. That, that specifically is one of the things I wrote down when I was like writing down my favorite things about him. I specifically remember when he took them to in fact I have like a gif of it saved on my phone I specifically remember the scene where he takes them to the bakery and he gets that and he like takes one of the littlest ones up and he's like kneeling down on his knees to be like eye level mm-hmm. with the kid and he's like which cupcake do you want and the kid picks Amino cupcake mm. and Mino gives him a kiss on the cheek and it's just like the sweetest little thing oh the cheeks are so smushy <laughs> and he's so good with kids that was like what initially because we did and talk about it in this episode yet but hello baby yes. the show that shiny was on where they took care of a baby um that was like what made me fall for me know that i was like right. yes this guy he's my bias because he was so good with that little baby and i always think of the scene where he was brushing his teeth with him in the morning um and he was just like so he's just so sweet and like he's known as like chad tinderheart because yeah. he's just like such a kind and like giving loving person and it really comes out when he's with kids yeah Later in that episode, he takes the kids to meet uh, Yeri and Irene and Sulgi in the dance practice room and they like stretch and learn a little red velvet dance. And it's just very sweet and cute and good. And so you should watch that. Um, And then he was on a whole bunch of episodes in 2018 because that same soccer dad 
a lot of the soccer dads on Return of Superman are very, very busy on account of their playing sports most mm-hmm. of the time. So, like, their kids are almost always taken care of by guests. Yeah. It's like a weird loophole to the show. So, soccer dad could not go on this trip. They were going to hike to Mount Pekdu, which is, like, in China. And it's, like, you can see North Korea on the other side. Mm-hmm. And it's this big deal. And it takes hours to hike up it. So Mino went as a stand-in dad on that trip. So it's three episodes, 249 through 251. And he's just a hero. Like, he's the hero of the trip. He's the only one who speaks Chinese. The other dads are all really old and get really tired. So he's, like, giving piggyback rides. And he's taking kids to the bathroom. And he's, like, I don't know. He was just, like, the hero yeah. of that trip. And it's so great. He's so cute. He's so, oh my God. The, even just like the scenes of him taking the little babies like through the airport were like enough to just (laughs) melt you into a puddle. Like he's just so doting and thoughtful. It's beautiful. Um, And then he obviously had to go to the military, so we didn't see him for a bit, but he made two like almost back to back appearances when he got back. On episode 369, him and Kwang Yi came to visit another soccer player who's on the show now. He has a little girl and two little boys who, like, speak um, German, Swedish. What is their mom? They speak too many languages, these little children, and they're very cute, and they become obsessed with Mino, and him and Kwang Yi came to va- babysit, but they, like, and they had been babysat by Kwang Yi a bunch of times. But they want absolutely nothing to do with him once you know shows up. Don't care about Kwangi at all. And then the kids became like hardcore Shaw Walls. And in like a bunch of episodes, they always sing like ring ding dong and they sing replay and they like love him. So then he came back on episode 376 and that's when he was blonde. It was the day he dyed his hair blonde because the kids mm. were like, your hair? And he was like, I just did it today. Do you like it? <laughs> Um, and he just like, g- they did a picnic lunch at the soccer stadium and the baby like threw a fit because he wasn't getting enough attention and like me no notice that he was throwing a fit in the corner. And like, I don't know. He's just very good and attentive and sweet and the sweetest. And I love watching him just hold babies. I know he's so kind with them and it's sweet because he doesn't have younger siblings. He isn't. He's o- the youngest. He has older siblings. Uh, just one, just, just one, one older, older brother, brother who is supposedly better looking than him. But Mino so is taller, say. but he says his brother is better looking and was more popular. And like his brother's the actual golden child. Yes, <laughs> which is so funny that like his brother is the golden child in their family. Like so wild. Um, like how is that even possible? <laughs> but <laughs> okay, Mino. Um, but yeah, so it's not like he has experience like raising his younger siblings or something. He just is. I don't know, he great just has kids. that in him he yeah. just has it in him because he's, he's just such a loving boy he's so loving um but yeah what should we talk about any now? other are there other variety shows or like yeah any other variety show moments that you can think of something that is like watchable Hmm. I mean, I feel like so many of my favorite things are just like from shiny stuff mm-hmm like, like shiny episodes of yeah, Knowing like Brothers shiny and stuff episodes like of things like you know every single episode of Weekly Idol that Shiny was on, like Mino started a fight with the hosts yeah. at some point, or like on Knowing Brothers, he like has hysterical break. Like my favorite, He's- we watched it on Patreon, so you can go watch our commentary of it. But on the most recent Knowing Brothers, when he told the story of how hurt he was that Key would not just hug him when he came back from the military and he keeps screaming, what are you going to do about my broken heart? What are you going to do about my broken heart? I also love on knowing brothers when he throws like is ready to throw hands during the games themselves. Like I always think about that one where they had to chug the um, soda through the straw and the producers are like, it's a tie. And the look on his face is like so betrayed. Like he's so upset because he really chugged a lot of that soda and it was just like so obviously not a tie. Oh, he was ready to toss that table. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I also, oh, this is random, but I, when I was looking for stuff today, I found that the really old program, Invincible Youth, that like Hyanna and Hara and Sunny and like everybody was on a million years ago is subbed and available on YouTube officially. Nice. Um, And he showed up in episode six and they make such a big freaking deal about him being handsome and they made him do a tournament of girls like he had to pick 
a fave they like made him oh like, no pick between the girls and he's like dying because he didn't want it you just didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings and it was but it was really fun and cute nice He's fun. He's just fun. I love when people can't get over how handsome he is. I saw this behind the scenes video of a very recent photo shoot that he did where he's just like, he's like wearing a blazer and I don't think he's a shirt on underneath, but he's like wearing a blazer and he's like sitting down by this wall and he's just like staring like to the sides with like a profile. And so like, obviously it's going to be like a still image, but this is a video and you can just hear all the women in the background being like, Ooh, <laughs> And they're like all like, oh my gosh, like squealing over how handsome he is. And he's just sitting there and he's like keeping a straight face. And he just goes, like he gets embarrassed and starts like laughing to himself. My favorite. Oh, I love it. But I was just like, all these women are valid. They're There's another correct. one. I don't know what the clip is from exactly, but it was during Don't Call Me because his hair was red. But he was on some kind of eating show with like some old man. Oh, yes. I and they're sitting in the like back restaurant room or whatever. And the Ajuma from the restaurant slides open the door and starts to tell them about like, oh, that the, their food comes with two fishes or something. And she looks at Mino and literally falls to her knees. Yeah. <laughs> and is like, you are so beautiful. Your parents must be so, so proud that they made you. Like, she's just, like, amazed and can't even talk business. She truly <laughs> falls to her knees. It's yeah, the greatest. Does. It's the greatest. <laughs> Everybody says he's so much better looking in person than you can even imagine. Wow. He's already so, so good looking in, in print and film. And his face is like a fist, they say. His face oh, is as small. small as a fist, but his <laughs> eyes are so big. His eyes are so big. And so are his lips. His whips. His pouty whips. <laughs> um, oh, my God. I love him. Uh, Unfortunately, like we said, he has not released that much solo music, but there, he has done several solo performances. The first few were actually at like shiny tours, right? Because um, at most K-pop concert tours, if you've never been to a K-pop concert, usually you have not only like the whole group performing, but you also get fun little solo stages. And this is where like, like Onu once tap danced, like a cover of Close the Door and like- He did his Lady Gaga and his SM like- Yeah, and BDSM whips. thing yes. and like, didn't <laughs> is, didn't Bomi like get on a stripper, stripper pole, pole or once, something yeah. at one? Yeah, so they all like, the, <laughs> the idols get to do like fun stuff for their solo stages. And a lot of times they do cover songs of other people's songs. So like he did a cover of like Lady Gaga. Um, Onu covered like a shiny song, but- um, etc. Yes. Right? They get they get more freedom with what they decide to do for their solo stage. Yes. So some very important Mino solo stages, the only ones we have that were so these first couple oh truly gosh. kept me going in those early years. But at the 2011 Shiny first concert in China, Mino did a cover of "Oh My God" by Usher mm -hmm. in this white suit that was black on the back, like it's like a half suit yeah, where the front is white. Mm -hmm. The back is black. And he did Nothing not wear underneath. a shirt under the blazer. Did his whole dance. And then the blazer comes off. At oh, the very end. At the end. Back muscles. Yeah. Um, it's the best. And it's mostly, <laughs> does he actually sing the that cover? That one is just, him singing the cover. Because he sings, okay. honey got a booty like pow, pow, pow. Honey got some boobies like wow, oh, wow. Okay, he great. sings those lines. Great. Honey got a booty like pow, pow. I wasn't sure if he was just He does sing that one. Turn up the music the next year at 2012 Shiny World. He did turn up the music by Chris Brown. And that is just a dance cover. He's mm -hmm. not singing along to it. But again, jacket came off at the end. Ripped. That's what he's doing. Abs. That's what he's here for. <laughs> he's the beefy one of Shiny. Um, And I guess I will take this moment now while we're talking about these fan cams to just like say a really sincere shout out to Dreaming, which is the name of basically, as far as I can tell, the only Mino fan site in existence. Dreaming has given us basically everything. I would have never seen so many of these videos if it wasn't out for this one dedicated fan site. And she's always been there and she kept, she went to all his military like 
events. Mm -hmm. So like she is the only reason that I've gotten to see him at so many things and that there's so many fan cams of him. And I just wanted to say that I know that liking fan sites is controversial, but I'm just saying that this one, this one, the only one I have has really held it down for me all (laughs) these years. And we thank her and we her work. Thank her. Um, okay, in 2016 at Trinity World Japan, Mino's solo for that was a Japanese song called Kara Kara Jankan, and he brought a bunch of kids out on yes. the stage, and it's very cutesy, just pure Totally different vibe. Totally different vibe. And then at 2016 for Tokyo Dome, he sings a ballad called Kiseki. And it's like a fan, like it's a fan song. I don't know whose song it is actually, but the lyrics are very fan songy. Mm. And he came out in a baseball uniform that says Chemino on the front <laughs> and a little hat. And he just like sincerely sings this song. And there's like so many videos of it. And I saw there's one where somebody took that song and looped it for an hour. Like the Japanese fans, I think, were very glad that he Mm -hmm. sang this. And he sings it so good. And like it was a singing solo stage. And he didn't take his clothes off. And he just sang a song sincerely. And that's great. And people loved it because you're more than just your body. Yes, he is. But we do love that body. Even though that body is hot. We do love that body. (laughs) Um, And then before he went to the military, Mino did get to do his very first and only ever, until now, solo fan meet, which was called Best Choice. Had to be a pun. Um, He did it in a couple of cities. There were soul shows. He like went to Japan. He went somewhere else. There was like... It was a bit of a tour. tour. Um, But he wore... This excellent silver sequined suit for yes. some of the performances. That is excellent. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's so perfectly tailored. Um, but let's see. We'll watch one of these videos later as our end video. Mm-hmm. But he did a dance cover to Attention by Charlie Poop. Yes, I think so. <laughs> yes. He did a shiny medley of like shiny songs. That was great. He sang Sunday Morning by Maroon 5. So. Joshua Hong must have been incensed. <laughs> he also did like a quick cover of Move and a quick cover of I Wanna Be, mm-hmm. Timmy and Key's songs. And then at the Japanese ones, he sang ballads night sky and heart and then at one of the other shows he sang a song called every day every moment i will put them all on a playlist um but yeah that's his only like solo stuff and then of course obviously before he went to the military he released his one and only solo song called i'm home yes and we have a video reaction of us watching that for the very first time on our youtube channel if you did not know that already we just cry Yes, it's really just us looking like sad and like (laughs) sniffly while we're watching it. We don't really talk through it, but it's beautiful and it's still my alarm, actually. Is it? Yes. You kept it? I kept it. I had set it as my alarm um, when he went into the military and I was like, I'm going to leave this as my alarm until he gets out. But after he got out, it's just such a, it works so nicely as alarm, as (laughs) an alarm because it starts with a whistle. Mm -hmm. So you can just like get the little... And then snooze. Yeah. And then just like when you're ready to get up, you can just like let it play and then listen to the whole song. Yeah. And that's how Cookie used to know that I was going to get up because when she heard him singing, she would run into the bedroom and jump on my chest and be like, it's time to get up. All right. Now you're getting up. (laughs) Yeah. I also, when he went into the military, I put the first time we got a nice picture of him in his uniform. Like I said, I would in that I'm home video. I put that picture Mm -hmm. in a frame. And I still haven't changed it. I just like keep it on my desk because I like remembering my time as a military wife. Yeah. (laughs) We didn't know how it was going to go back then. You know, like that's why we're so crying in the video. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that, you know, time was just going to fly. Yeah. And then it would pass and it would be easier, so much easier than we thought it would be. But he had a great time in the military despite his members trying to take that joy away from him. (laughs) Specifically, he... He really liked being a Marine. He did. He got to be a paratrooper, which means he got to jump out of building. I mean, out of uh, planes. Um, And yeah, he was just like a badass. 
Yeah, and he loved it. And when he came home from the military and did his little welcome V Live, he was wearing his uniform and he like had all these pictures from military time and he was like so excited to be telling stories. And then he would look at the comments and the comments would be like, take the uniform off. Stop telling us about military. I was like, y'all shut up. Let him tell us about where he's been. Let him have this so rude but it was like a year since he got out very recently and he like posted a picture of his whole uh squad on his instagram and it was like i miss you guys hope everybody's good and like oh he misses his military friends well yeah i mean i bet they really bonded jumping out of planes yeah um but an interesting thing about me compared to other biases i have is how little i actually do know about his like personal life Mm -hmm. because he's a very very private person like i've never in all these years ever seen his living space like in any shiny like one fine day or we got married Never into Mino's bedroom, not one time. Mm -hmm. On one fine day, when they got to the hotel, he was like, good night. And that was it. Ki and Jonghyun were making videos from their bathtubs. But Mino was like, no, I went inside and you don't get to see me anymore. And he says he'll never go on I Live Alone. He does not want anyone to see his house. Like, and he didn't, I was so shocked when he got an Instagram because I thought he would never do social media. Yeah, and he loves his Instagram. He's on it all the time. But yeah, that surprised me because I wasn't sure that he was going to be an Instagram boy. But it's just funny because like I could draw you the layout of Hyuna's old apartment. But like I don't I don't know anything about how Mino lives his life. And that's great. I think that's great. Yeah, he (laughs) does a really good job to stay private and he should be giving people tips. Yeah, other people need need his advice. (laughs) Seriously. Um. But yeah, let's see. What else? What are other important, like, Mino things that should be addressed in this episode? Well, do like, we want to just go down we just this go list? read our list? Yes, I'm adding to the bottom. Okay. So as a way to just get excited and talk about things that we love, I tried to make a list of 30 reasons that we love Mino. And there are obviously so many, more than 30. And a lot of these are broad and a lot of them are extremely specific. So like, I don't know. You could say it's 30 or you could say it's 100. I don't know. (laughs) Um, But the first thing on the list we talked about in the bias episode, but it's very important. And that is Mino's amazing laugh. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's so loud and boisterous and like unrestrained, which is yeah. the best. And um, the pitch of it is like so high and hyena like, which is really funny. Yes, I always think of this moment where the me- because the members make fun of his laugh a lot and there's this like clip from a concert where they're like making a joke about his laugh and he starts laughing at the joke and then Timmy just like puts the microphone in front of his face and it like perfectly captures the like insane cackle which just makes Mino laugh even more because then he like hears his own laugh on the la- on the like microphone. It's hilarious. It is hilarious. Um, reason number two, we already discussed, but Mino Appa, da- the dad version of him, that's yes. what the kid on, uh, Hello Baby called them all, like, dad. So, like, Mino Appa, like, mm-hmm. that. He's such that a good That 17-year-old in that feathered mullet wiping that little chunky toddler's tears. Like, that oh is Oh, my God. Very... Holding that little chunky toddler <laughs> in his arms while he teaches him how to brush his teeth. I'll never forget it. Magic. I'll never forget it. This is why the Ring Ding Dong mullet is so special to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's an important moment. Like, it's a silly haircut. But honestly, like, thinking about it in the all this time, like... It's such an iconic moment and it's a perfect haircut for a 17-year-old boy to have. Like Totally. It's and it's honestly glorious. It's so fluffy and so feathered. And when he puts it in a ponytail, he looks hot. Yeah, it was great. Mm-hmm. Um, reason number three, his super long eye wrinkle. He has in the corners of the outsides of his eye one eye wrinkle that is like an inch long. Mm-hmm. And it goes so far back when he smiles. And if people like change the contrast on like photos of him, it's like he it has a it, wing yeah. of eyeliner that is like so long, but it's so beautiful. <laughs> it's so beautiful. 
Um, okay, reason number four, always doing the ring ding dong dance enthusiastically at a moment's notice. I feel like that is his, like if he goes on a show and someone is like, be an idol, or like they say, mm-hmm. you know, do shiny. He just like will do Does ring ding ring dong ding real dong. fast. Yeah. And that just crack it cracks me up every time. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly related, but not uh a specifically on the list. I will say like Mino Shawol or like Shawol Mino yes. is also a great thing to love about him because he's so enthusiastic about being a member of Shiny and supporting all of the members too. And like he would fully fanboy at all of Timin and Jong's concerts and like went to like Keyland and he gets all the merch and he like dances in the crowd and he has such a good time um, and like cheers louder than everyone. Yeah, see, I love fanboy Mino. That can be a list yeah. because I remember that being a really important early moment for me is there's a moment in the I Am documentary where Kangta and Sully are singing a little like duet on the stage and they cut to Mino in the wings, like watching them and he's just swaying and like mm-hmm. lipping the song and his eyes are so like, he is, has sparkly like fanboy eyes yeah. and it's just so sweet to see. Oh my God. And the next one on the list is when his eyes get big. <laughs> His eyes get real big. Yeah, because he already has big round <laughs> eyes and his face is very expressive. It's so expressive. Mm. And he like doesn't hold his facial expressions back at all. So mm-hmm. like he will just let his eyes get so big. And I love it. Um, I I wrote his widow booty because of this TikTok sound. Oh his widow booty. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't like think about a cute butt without hearing that sound anymore. But he does have such a cute butt. He does, as Kara can <laughs> attest. It is the reason she started watching To the Beautiful You. And we watched that whole season, that mm-hmm. whole series. Mm-hmm. Number seven is Blonde Mino. That's on my list too. Uh huh. It's essential. It's essential. A thing we have only gotten two, two times exactly. Yeah. But we've only ever gotten, we got like a white haired Mino and then we got like a honey blonde Mino. We've only ever gotten that gorgeous honey blonde during View and it was very short lived, but it was Oh, I'm talking Atlantis blonde. Or is that white too? Oh, that's also white. Okay. That's also white, I think. So he's done white twice. Yeah. For one of one and... Atlantis. Atlantis. And then he was honey blonde in view. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm but that honey. is the peak, in my opinion, because he's also got his guns out in that whole music of video. Course. And so then he's blonde and he's in that green and that tank green top. Green tank top. Or he's blonde and he's in that white, white Franklin tank outfit. Top. Specifically, <laughs> that white Franklin outfit is on my list as a separate thing, a separate reason to mm-hmm. love him because it is a perfect outfit. Yeah, it is a perfect outfit. Um, at reason number eight is his thumb ring. Mino has a thumb ring and he's always worn it. It usually accompanies him for like personal schedules. Like shiny Mino doesn't wear a thumb ring on stage, Mm -hmm. but Mino at the airport always has his thumb ring on. Um, I just love it. I think it's such a fun, interesting piece of jewelry. Like, I don't know. It just like, reminds me of the early 90s, like thumb rings and anklets mm-hmm. were like cool new jewelry things. Um, and it's just like, it's like very like manly and cool. It's just like a simple silver ring. Nobody knows what it means to him because again, very, he's a very private. private person. But it's clearly important because he's been wearing it for years and he yeah. like always has it on. But I just, I love his thumb ring and anytime I see it, I just get excited. Like it's my old friend. <laughs> Um, okay, reason number nine on my list is a very specific reason, which is the outfit that he wore to the airport on July 29th, 2016. It is just a black t-shirt and a pair of ripped jeans and some little suede boots. But my God, my God. I think that this is the outfit he was wearing for the thing I added to the end of the list, <laughs> which is the jinky airport back hug mm. where they're leaving the airport and Mino is wearing a black t-shirt and jeans and he has his like hand in his pocket and he's just like casually walking and jinky runs up behind him and like 
puts his face in between his shoulder, in between mm-hmm. Mino's shoulder blades and kind of like, oh, like surprises him as he's walking. And Mino just like does the best like casual, like, oh, ha And like immediately like grabs Jinky's arm that is like around his waist and like just con- doesn't even miss a step, just like continues walking. But now he has a Jinky on his back. <laughs> Um, but this, uh, the extension of this is just his general ability to wear the shit out of a t-shirt. Like sure. that is a plain black t-shirt, but there are many examples of other, like, whew, he just looks so good in clothes. I don't know. I don't know what to tell <laughs> you, but he wears a t-shirt like nobody else wears a t-shirt. Um, reason number 10, how hot he looked smoking in that horrible movie derailed. It was a very rough movie. But ooh, he held that it cigarette. Was gritty nice. and he looked fine. <laughs> um, reason number eleven, sort of similar to this airport story you brought up, but just fitting shinies into his arms. Mm-hmm. The group hug. He's real good at it, at holding them all at once. Mm-hmm. And I just think that's special. <laughs> um, reason number twelve, his secret cursing habit. Yeah, we've I'm, been told several times that Mino has an absolutely filthy sailor mouth that no one ever yeah. hears. But on an episode of Tamien's... It was called of, Tem Log, I think. Yes. It was when he was doing his off sick concert, I believe. Um, and there's like a... He's like sitting at a table in like a backstage room and the camera is like on the table and Mino like comes in and like tackles him in a hug like while cursing the he only, basically it's comes, bleeped it's just a full yeah. bleep a full 10 second bleep of him mm-hmm. coming in and hugging Tamien and then realizing that there's yeah cameras. and Tamien just goes like camera <laughs> and he's like oh god oh no and there's like so many instances of like Jong on Blue Night, like calling me now and then being like, "Don't curse your life!" Like, and before he, as soon as he says hello, he just, "Don't curse your on life!" Like, we're on the radio, and like he will call him too, like, "Don't curse your on life!" Immediately, like, so obviously he curses constantly, and I think that's very funny. Mm-hmm. Um, reason number thirteen, I like, I thought I would find a picture to explain it, but I thought you might know what I was talking about. He does. I I wrote the line smile where his cheeks do the thing. And I know that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> well, there's a thing that he does. It's usually when he's acting. I feel like it's an acting, you know, when he's trying to be serious and like put his smile away. And he does this like super line mouth, but then it like pulls back into this weird, I can't, I'll have to put a picture of it, but the line mouth thing where his cheeks do the thing, it's a thing. I don't know. All right. His face, his very expressive face is It is point. a very expressive face. Reason number 14 is one double eyelid. He only that's has great. the one. I think it's his left eye. Cute. Adorable. Love that he didn't get that fixed. I think it's cute. Yeah. Um, number 15, the way he wore his dress whites at that one military thing. I have a photo of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Like yeah. that. When he said he was going to become a Marine, like that is what I wanted. That is what I wanted. Yep. This uniform. Oh, my God. Beautiful. Yeah, he looked like officer and a gentleman. Yes, exactly. Um, reason number 16, I wrote Chang Min Ho, but I think we can talk about other things. But specifically, I wanted to talk about his friendship with Chang Min from TVXQ because it's very special and I really like it. And I'm glad that they have each other. They are very good friends. They feel like two sides of the same Coin. regular boy coin or something like they just want to play video games and like watch soccer together but like Mino's really similar to you know mm-hmm. <laughs> but he, but he's not you know and Chang Min always has to be with you know and yeah. so I like that he chooses a person who's super similar to be his best friend but no not that guy not that guy <laughs> has to be with all the time a different guy a funner guy um, but I love them together. I they love have a them really together. cute relationship. And Mino, Chang Min also has a radio show right now. And Mino has been on his radio show a couple of times. And they're just like 
they're good friends, so they're fun. Um, but I, I had just like j- him and his friendships in general, because mm-hmm. like Chang Min is a very good friend of his, and he's also like very good friends with the girls of Girls Generation. Mm-hmm. He's very good friends with the girls of FX, and I always loved like the SM family um friendships that he has mm-hmm. and that we would get to see like from like behind the scenes footage um so you get to see like a lot of like candid relationship yeah. moments which are really nice yeah because he is such a like sincere person like we said his one of his nicknames is like tender heart and he's just very thoughtful and i think very like caring and so we always see like you know they uh, like he goes to like the girls generation practice room to like give them like a gift to support them for their new album or like he goes to their like birthday party yeah, he's always or... at their birthday parties mm-hmm. and that's the best when he shows up in a girls generation birthday party video yeah because you know that means that he's real he's real good mm-hmm. because those girls would not choose to hang out with anyone from work if they didn't have to very true so i mean you don't <sighs> see the super juniors at their parties no nope. No, you don't. <laughs> um, number 17, I wrote the super cute freckle on his chin, which I feel like I have only been getting to know very recently because of HD video A. <laughs> and B, that I feel like they used to put makeup over it mm. or the videos were just like not good enough quality, but he has this super cute little freckle like on his chin under his bottom lip over to the side. And I feel like it's been showing up in pictures like way more lately. And I'm like, look at you, adorable. Mm. Yeah, I'm flipping through this celebrity magazine that I have of him and I I don't see any of, it's not in any of the pictures. I believe no you that it's older. there. But a lot of these pictures also don't have his chin in them. True. See, it's right there. Oh, yeah. But anyway, uh, that was number 17. Mm, number 18. The way that he does girl group dances badly, but with 100% sincerity and teamwork and good spirits. <laughs> yes, I specifically had, I had cover dances in general, but also because there's been a lot of really good radio show moments lately of him like, you know, Blackpink's doo 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 is playing in the studio. So he's <laughs> sitting in the chair like doing the dance and it's adorable. Or like he loves doing the little like next level move. <laughs> Um, but I always remember the video of him like in the hallway doing Red Velvet's Power Up. Um, and because he's just like, it's, I think he like he at a certain what, yeah, point like, turns it into a, oh, great. Baby shark dance. Yes. I was going to say, I knew it had something to do with the baby shark. Oh, yeah. This is at SM Town because they're wearing their little SM Town shirts. Look at his little wiggles. <laughs> oh, he's so proud of himself. Now he's like, I got it. I got it. Joy does not agree. Joy thinks he's embarrassing. <laughs> she can't be seen with this. <laughs> <laughs> but look at that t-shirt. Look how he's wearing that uh, t-shirt. Wearing the shit out of that shirt. Um, Love that. Oh, and also iconic Nino moment was at some fan- some shows at some point years ago, him and Changmin and Q Yun from Super Junior War like got in full drag to do a girls day dance. Oh, yes. And Changmin was like so upset and like walked like a boy and was just like mad to be in a dress. But Mino was having a, he was like, Mino a way, had a great he had time. A way better attitude about it. He was wearing a long red <laughs> wig. He was having fun. He was having so much fun. Um, I wrote shy fist in front of mouth at any sign of awkward. That is his mm, he go does. to uh, um, awkward moment is just a little fist in front of the face. Super cute. Um, this is just a single moment. I have to play the clip, but this is from Shiny Live. L-I-E-V. Like where they. Oh, yeah. Where they lie down to do the V live. down. Don't Tell me your name. My name is Miro. My name is Miro. My name is Miro Choi. Please. Tell me your name. Tell me your name. <laughs> Don't. Tell me your name. <laughs> that, that's it. <laughs> Just the peace. <laughs> they had to do some challenge where they had to like talk in a silly voice, and <laughs> Timmin was very good at it, but. That whole live only has it only has Jinky Timin and and Mino in it and it's fully chaos and <laughs> hilarious. 
Um, the next one on my list is another like very specific moment in time, um, a specific performance that was at UMF Korea, which was like a EDM festival or something, but he wore this tank top that said NYC on it and these black sunglasses and the fan sides got the most amazing pictures of him this day. I made so many collages with them, like pictures from this day, very important, great day. <laughs> A good moment. A great in day in shiny Mino history. <laughs> um, the next one is simply suits. As we said, he wears the fuck out of clothes. Um, we didn't really talk about any of his like fashionista ing, but he is a well accomplished model and is like photographed all the time because he's so beautiful and he's so tall and he's so thin and he wears clothes <laughs> so beautifully. Um, specifically, he looks phenomenal in suits. Yeah, like, all the time. I wrote that down when I came across like a Tumblr post where the caption was like that he invented them, mm-hmm. like Jamie No invented suits. Yeah. It seems like he did sometimes. An incredibly iconic moment of him looking drop dead gorgeous in a suit is from, I believe, I don't remember what year, but it was right before he went into the military. He was at some event where Melania Trump was also there. Oh, yes. And there were these schoolgirls who, like, they were standing in front of Melania and Mino, who were standing next to each other. And he was looking beautiful in a suit. And the girls turn around, or uh, one of the girls turns to her friend and is, like, whispering, 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 like, turn around, turn around, turn around. And she turns around and she sees Melania and she turns to her friend. She's like, what the, (laughs) what do you care? And she goes, no, turn around your other shoulder. (laughs) And the girl turns around at her other shoulder sees Mino's face and drops to her <laughs> knees and it's just like oh my god I can't it. like so like starts freaking out immediately and like Mino starts cracking up laughing because he had no idea she was going to react that way because he had just like waved to yeah, her like, and she like dropped to the <laughs> ground and it was so adorable and fun I believe that was an event for supporting girls playing soccer it was like yeah, a yeah, yeah. it was a girls thing. it was a it was all like, it was definitely something for for girls. Yeah. Because he supports athletics and women. And I love it. <laughs> um, 23 is his o- silent, opened mouth laugh smile. There is a point sometimes where the crazy laugh doesn't come out. And he just does the like open, just the open mouth, yes. silent scream laugh. So funny. His mouth is so big. His <laughs> face is so expressed. He just, all his facial expressions are the best ones. They are. They're so good. Um, Like you spoke of earlier, I wrote the way he ran up on Sohyun in that one episode of Running Man. I yes. needed to go get some air. It's so good. And he and Sohyun, I think, are like very good friends because the party I was thinking about before was her birthday party. I like remember um, him going specifically to one of her parties. Um, But uh, yeah, they're really cute. And they're obviously like good fun friends because he scares the absolute shit out of her. Um, And she takes it like very well. And she like almost kicks him in the nuts, I think. Or maybe that was Tiffany. Oh, I was wrong. It's not the So Young part. It's the Su Young part because she, he Oh, like, Su Young. That's what yes, I, you oh, literally said So Young. I did. I, was thinking I wrote it Soo down. Young. I was oh. thinking, I even said So Young too, but I was thinking okay. Su Young. It's Su Young's birthday party that he goes to. Yes. And she's my favorite of girls yes. generation. So I like that they're friends. But there's a running man where they have him be like their extra like secret weapon. Mm-hmm. And he wears a red suit and a little black like masquerade mask. And then he just like goes on assassin attack to rip as many name tags. And he comes up on Soo Young in like a drugstore and like shoves her up against the <laughs> shelves in this very intimidating, amazing way. Watch, watch him do it. Wait, there's going to be an ad. Oh, right at the moment. Goodbye. I know. Google Fi. Oh, I think this is the moment where she almost kisses him in the balls. I mean, kisses him, kicks him. <laughs> <laughs> that would be wild. Kicks him in the balls. <laughs> Unless that is Tiffany, and I'm just forgetting it. No, Tiffany almost outruns him. She's like, oh, no, no yeah, she see? kicks him. She kicks him away. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I love it. Yes. I love it. But so intimidating. So fast. Oh, my. He is so fast. Um, Number 25 is his offended pout. <laughs> 
He has his, he does such a good pout when he's like feeling wrong. Oh my God. Yes. I have a (laughs) picture saved on my phone that is just him with his white hair. It's at a fan meet and he has his white hair pushed back and he's wearing a black long sleeve sweater and he's just folding. His arms are folded and he's at the table and he's just going, I thought I had that one too, but I don't see it here in my amino folder. But I must have it somewhere because I know exactly. You which know exactly what photo about. I'm talking about. Because that was another fan site. There's a really good or a fan sign. There's another funny clip of it where Mina was on the end of the table and the girl just walks away without taking her little sign thing, and he like holds it as she walks past, <laughs> and then he just puts it down <laughs> like because she left without it. Oh. oh boy. Um similarly the next one is when he yells whether he's winning or losing. He's always yelling. He is very loud. Very loud. I love when he yells. And as a fellow loud person, I appreciate that. <laughs> um and then another thing is his habit of being an imitator. Um he loves to imitate people. I will play a couple clips here of him like Singing other people's songs in a fit an offensive way to make fun of them. <laughs> 네, 네, 여러분, 아, 여러분, 저 키에요. 아, 너무 키야. 어려워. 너 언제 너 그렇게 막말이처럼 그랬어요, 내가. 아, 갑니까? 엄마, 행복하자. <웃음> 아프지 말고. 아프지 말고. 엄마, 행복하자. 진짜 아냐. 행복하자. 네, 뭐 이런 게 있고 또. There's also, we were talking about the One Fine Day episode where he goes to London and then the editors had a really fun time. They like edited this montage of him imitating all, like of him being a copycat. Yeah. Where he like went, walked through a park and he like imitates a jogger that runs past (laughs) and then he like imitates a squirrel that is like on a bench and he's just like imitating all these people that he sees to just like entertain himself. And that's funny. Um, and yeah, we said cuddly, just being cuddly, airport back hugs, all cuddliness. Mm -hmm. He's a cuddler. Yeah, he is a cuddler and he loves to, he just like lets his members like lay all over him, which is always adorable. (laughs) Yeah. It's his right and his role as the biggest one. Yeah. He must hold them. Yes. And Timine loves being a little shit. I remember when they, when he first got out of the military and Timine did uh, they were doing a live where Timine was like snuggled in between Onu and Mino, and he was like leaning on Mino's shoulder and like hugging his arm and being. And he looked right at the camera and he goes, "Aren't you jealous? Don't you wish you were right here with in in these arms?" And we were like, "Yeah, yeah. we are jealous, Timine. How dare you?" Um, number 29 is specifically the gifts he gets key Great. <laughs> because he has gotten key a lot of really, uh, well, he and key have a very funny, like relationship because they talk a lot about how they didn't really get along at first. And so they like bicker very often, but they, yeah, they barely get deeply. along now, but I know, but it's like a deep, but it's brotherly a loving love. Kind. Yeah. Um, and so like usually key will just send images to Mino and be like, this is what I want. Like if Buy it's his birthday, this. he's like, like if Key's birthday is coming up, he just sends Mino a picture of a vacuum and is like, get me this for my birthday. And Mino always does. <laughs> yes. He always gets it for him for his birthday. And like Key has talked about some things where like he will just mention that he wants to get a new whatever, like water pitcher. And then the next day one arrives at his house because Mino got it for him. Um, and I just think he's, he just... Gift giving is definitely one of his love languages. I he would absolutely agree. showers keys and key in gifts. Um, and I think it's really sweet. Yeah. Yeah. And most really recently on his radio show, he had Key come on for to promote his solo album. Um, and he gave Key first a fake out birthday present, like of tissues to make fun of him for crying over getting his first win. Like had to get oh, yeah. a dig in there. 
but then underneath it was a bag that Key really wanted. But you have to watch this clip because Mino's face while Key is like getting oh ready God. to open this present is pricelessly insane. He looks like he's <laughs> pulling like the biggest, like biggest prank. He looks like Key is like opening the box and Mino is looking straight into the camera with this like gremlin smile. Like his eyebrows are triangles and his grin is ear to ear. And he's just like, so excited for Key to open this present. It's fucking precious. And he did love it, so he was right. Yes. He because he knows it. Key very well, and he knows exactly what to get him. Yeah. And last but not least, we gave an honorable mention to this at the beginning of the list. Fanboy Mino. He goes so hard. His uh, interactions at Tim Means concerts are maybe my favorite because... Tamin will usually find a moment in the concert to, like, as he's wandering through the crowd, like, get near Mino. Mm. And they always have, like, a fun, like, banter or whatever. And, like, he tried. I think it was one time where me, where Tamin, like, tried to get key. No, 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 no. Maybe Tamin and Mino were, like, interacting, joking around or whatever. And Mino... Mino sang something and then turned the microphone to I think to this Timine. was at Best Choice because Timin and Irene and Solgi came to Best Choice one time. And oh. Mino like went to them to make oh, a deal okay, out of okay, it. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So yeah. I just remember Timin getting a microphone put into his face <laughs> and not knowing the words to whatever he was supposed to be singing and it being very embarrassing. I think you're right that he was in the audience with the Red Velvets when, when that happened. Um, but they're adorable and I love the way that they support each other it's very sweet he's mm-hmm. a really great important part of shiny and i'm sad that he is often overlooked or like dismissed as simply a rapper like he isn't the one absolutely holding down every single shiny harmony they would not yeah. work if he was not there he getting the bass notes. bass notes in but also i think important. that's an interesting thing about him is that his speaking voice is quite low and sometimes his like rap choice is to like rap very low but his singing voice is like kind of a like higher pitch and it's like much more in the front of his like mouth Mm. than his like speaking is and so i range he's got range he's got range and he's important and we love him and i'm so happy that i've had him in my life for these last eight years i don't know what i would do He's my everything. (laughs) And he makes me so happy. Whenever I see him, then I'm just happy. And he didn't have to do anything but exist. (sighs) So we were happy to honor him and his 30th birthday with this quick deep dive of all the things he's done outside of Shiny um, and a quick 30 reasons why we love him. Yeah, and we do love him and I'm very looking forward to I hope he finds so many fun things to do in 2022 while Tamin is still gone like we have dramas to look forward to but I hope, I don't know, maybe more dramas, maybe a freaking solo album. That's what I'd really like actually. He deserves it. Well, he is coming out with a second fan meet. Yes, a fan meet soon. So we will see what content comes from that. I hope it's good. And with that, we'll be right back to watch a Mino video. (laughs) All right, we're back and we're going to end this by watching the shiny dance medley from the February 16th, my birthday, best choice in 2019. Um, so if you'd like to watch it with us, you can pull it up. It's on Dreaming Me No Fan Sites YouTube channel. <laughs> Again, shout out to Dreaming for keeping us keeping us fed with our Mino content. All right, here we go. Let's check this out. Three, two, one, go. Oh! All right, so we're starting with some Sherlock. And he's got his gorgeous glittery suit. It's so glittery. With four little Booty. backup dancers. But this time he gets to be the point. All in the fan chants are so loud. <laughs> Look at he smile. He loves doing shiny dances. He does. Choo-choo. 
That's the part where Shiny always ripped their pants. Yep. That little... That big wide leg plie. That reminds me of a real great Mino moment. I think it's in Shiny World. One of the Japanese ones. Mino's joking about how Tammy yep. rips his pants, and then he actually rips his own pants and has to roll. He literally off the stage. rolls like a log <laughs> off the stage. Okay, then we've got some good evening. He's just doing some nice crowd work. Yeah, smiley clap. <laughs> Oh, look at his face. He's so happy. He's so happy. I like that the backup dancers also have glitter on their little dress shirts. Oh, yeah. They have little glitter bangles. Oh, and on their collars. And the little, like, like yeah, mm -hmm. all the little shirt details are just sparkly. Those boots are so shiny. You could like see yourself in them. Yeah, his whole suit is so shiny. Everybody loves a Lucifer. Oh, walk slow. Lucifer. Yes, you champ for yeah. him. Yeah. That's his move, his signature move. That's your line. You did it good. <laughs> Lucifer. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Wow, straight into everybody. Another move where they constantly ripped their pants. Yes. That one right any, there. Any kind of wide legging. Shiny was so, you know, they wear tight mm -hmm. pants. Yes, and they do a lot of, like, second position squats and plies in their choreo. Like, look at that. <laughs> oh, shoulder wiggle. Ended it with an enthusiastic wave at the Yay! crowd. Oh, Mino! Yay! Happy, happy, happy birthday! Happy birthday! Dear Mino. Happy birthday! We love you so, 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 so much. Weekly recommendations. I recommend every single thing we talked about today. Get some Mino content in your life. Watch an old variety show. Check out one of his dramas. Watch these solo performances that I'll put in a playlist. Just have some Mino in your day because it's Mino Day. Yay, Mino Day. Do something nice for yourself because that's what he would do for you. Yeah, oh my God, I love that. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, that is it for this week. If you would like to find us, we can be found all over the internet at AMAK Pop Pod on Twitter and Instagram, AMAK Pop Pod at gmail.com for emails, 181 AMAK Pop 5. If you'd like to leave us a voicemail, P.O. Box 26096, Los Angeles, California, 90026 for snail mail. You can join our Patreon, get extra bonus video content every month, participate in episodes. Um, other things are in our link tree, link, link tree slash AMAK Pop. 
Um, and we'll be back next week to recap the Monster X movie. So Woo! I hope you all have your tickets for the dreaming. Yes, we're going to go week. see Monster X the Dreaming on Thursday. So get ready for another edition of AMAK Movie Club next week. Yes, and we will see you then. Happy birthday, Mino. We love you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Jonghyun, you're our inspiration. <laughs> <laughs>